Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at API The Docs. My name is Sanket. I'm the CTO and co-founder at SmartCar, and I'm excited to tell you all a little bit more about SmartCar and some of our learnings in building a development platform. To start out as a quick agenda, I'm going to start out with talking about SmartCar so everyone is on the same page and understands what we do as a platform. And then I'll talk a little bit about our experience in building the developer experience around our API. And then we'll finish off on going through a demo of an end-to-end -end API request on SmartCars API using our Python SDK. So everyone will get to see what it's like to actually write some of the code to integrate with our API. So to start out with, I wanted to highlight our, our mission statement, which is to empower developers to build the future of mobility. And what that means is that we build developer-friendly APIs, which make it easy for businesses to connect their apps with cars of any brand with a single integration. So whether you want to pull the odometer reading of a BMW or start and stop the charging of a Tesla, you can use Smart Cars API to do that. And today we have companies from keyless car sharing, optimized EV charging companies, and warranty administrators using our API in production to power their use cases. I wanted to quickly back it up, though, to talk about why we started this company in the first place. My co-founder, who's also the CEO of the company today, is my brother. And him and I were actually trying to build an app for a family car back in 2014. And we quickly found, by doing the thing that all developers do, we went to developer.company.com, and we found that just didn't exist in the car industry. There was no published API reference. There was no customer support or self-service dashboard for us to get API keys from. And so we decided rather than trying to go build an app, what if we rather solve that problem and built the API platform and that developer experience that we so badly wanted? And that's what we did. Today, we built the first standard API for cars. As you can see over on the left, we support 22 different brands today in the US. And we standardized how all those cars communicate into this very straightforward RESTful API over on the right side over here. So whether you're pulling the odometer or the location from any of these brands, it's the same API request and the same data structure coming back. And you can even do actions such as locking or unlocking the door of a car as well. And going from there, after we built that API itself, we learned that having a great API isn't enough. On top of having a great API, you need to have an amazing developer experience around it. And here are some of the core components that we highlighted that Smart Car has built over the years, from having a published API reference, open source SDKs in a number of different languages, having multi-channel support from phone and email, and even having a self-service dashboard that has transparent pricing, has insights into the usage of the API itself. And finally, the last thing I wanted to highlight here at the bottom right is something that we learned as we started selling to enterprise customers as well. Compliance is important. Having SOC 2 Type 2 compliance and GDPR compliance is a huge value add for your, your customers to have confidence in building on your developer platform. And finally, before jumping into the demo, I wanted to give a quick snapshot of some of the developers using our product today. As you can see, we have everyone from car sharing companies like Turo using our lock and unlock API to power their contactless rental experiences, and smart charging companies like Rolling Energy Resources, who use our EV APIs to start and stop the charge of a vehicle to manage its charging. And from there, I wanted to move forward and show you guys a full demo of Smart Car. All right, so to do this demo, I'm going to have my terminal up over here on the right side where I have some code already pre-written with our Python SDK to make it really fast to get off the ground and show you what it's like to actually make a request on SmartCar's API. So I'm going to start off on my website on my left over here at smartcar.com and hit sign up and create a brand new account on our dashboard. And the first thing that we'll see once I create this brand new account is an onboarding flow that SmartCar has. We find that this is really useful in learning a little bit more about who our developers are and how we can best help uh, suit to their needs and provide them the best support. Um, today, it's going to ask, it's asking me about what SDK I want to use on the front end. I'm only going to use a back end SDK today, so I'm going to skip that step and go down and select the Python SDK for the back end SDK we're going to use. 
and it'll give me a quick tip on how to install this using pip. But since I've already got it going and installed, I'm just going to continue on to the dashboard. And the first thing that we'll see here is that this developer account has been automatically upgraded to the business plan free trial. And we ensure that this gives everybody access to all the different features they want to try out before they actually have to put in a credit card and pay for the product. And I'll hit get started. And the last thing that I'll show you before we jump into the code is our getting started list. This shows you every step that you need to do from the start where we just registered an application called Sankit's first app all the way to making your first request. And we'll see these different check marks highlight as I go through the code and get through each of these different steps. So let's start off with retrieving credentials. So I'm going to get a pair of client ID and client secret credentials and paste that into my code. This is part of the OAuth 2 experience. These are the credentials that help SmartCar identify who your application is. And in addition to that, I'm going to enter in a redirect URI. For those unfamiliar with OAuth, this is where you're going to be receiving your receiving your uh, authorization codes and access tokens as well. So I'm going to put localhost 8000 slash callback. That's the route that I've set up inside of my code. And so now that I have all of that over on the left, we've got the uh, we've got the credentials ready to go, and I can dive into the code. So starting from the top over here, I've imported our smart car SDK, and I've also imported Flask, which is a really simple Python web framework. And the first thing we're going to do is instantiate smart cars auth client. Basically, this is giving it the smart cars SDK, our client ID secret and redirect URI. And in addition, it's also going to list out the different scopes that I want to request on the consumer's vehicle. And smart car can do a lot more than this that is all listed on our API reference, but I'm going to select just these four. So I'm going to be able to get the vehicle's make, model, and year, its location, odometer, and be able to lock and unlock its doors. From there, I'm going to start up a new Flask web server, and then I'm going to render a really simple HTML web page. So this web page is going to render in a authentication URL wrapped around a button, and we'll see a little hello world statement up top as well. Finally, after we receive, after we go through the auth flow, we're going to be receiving an authorization code over at our callback URL. And then instead of normally storing these access tokens in a database, I'm rather going to just print them out so that we can see it on the browser. And finally, I'm going to just get this app up and running on port 8000. And let's get this going. Perfect, we've got the app server running at localhost 8000. Let's go over there. There we go. We see our hello world message and our connect car button. I'm going to click that and launch the smart car auth flow, where we see Sandkit's first app is using smart car to connect to my car. I'll hit continue. And now it's going to prompt me to select the which brand of car that I have. As you can see, we have that those 22 different brands we talked about earlier. I'm going to select BMW and I'm going to log in with a pair of credentials from one of our uh, account executives who graciously lent his car for this demo. And it's as it's going to sign in over here with his BMW connected drive account, we're then going to see a permission dialogue. It's going to ask if I want to give Sankit's first app access to all these four permissions on this 2020 BMW. And if I'm good with that, and I think that sounds good to me, I'm going to hit allow. And we should see some access tokens printed back to the browser. So I'm going to copy that access token so we can use it to make requests. But before we do that, I'm just going to go back to our dashboard to that getting started list. And let's see where we're at. Great. We've got all four of these done. We just retrieved an access token. And all that's left is make to make our first request. So let's go back over to our terminal. And I've got some code over here. We've got our access token. We're going to grab a list of all the vehicle IDs associated with that token. And since we know there's only one vehicle, that 2020 BMW, I can safely grab the first vehicle out of the list. And then I'm going to make a request for its odometer reading. So let's clear our terminal down here. And I'm going to make a request to that. This, I'm going to run this file. It's going to make a live request from here over to Smart Car, which will reach out to that BMW vehicle. And there we go. We see this car has a distance, a odometer reading of 10,000 kilometers on it. And over here on the left, you'll also see that last checkbox was done. 
and we finished our getting started guide and made our first API request on SmartCar. Finally, I wanted to say thank you to everyone for joining us here today to learn a little bit more about SmartCar and seeing our demo. Please feel free to go to smartcar.com and sign up for a new account and make an API request yourself today. And here he is. Hi. Hello. Hi, Laura. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. On the other side of the Atlantic. Hi. Yes. <laughs> thank you for the demo. Um, thank you so much for having us today. We're excited to see it. Is CTO. What would you say were the key milestones in the development of this platform? And how long does it exist? Definitely. So SmartCar has been around since the end of 2014 when we first mm -hmm. started. And I can give maybe both the technical milestones and then maybe the business milestones as well mm -hmm. a little bit. From the technical side, definitely getting the platform up and running in the first place of having an MVP was the biggest milestone. That took us till about sometime in 2015. Um, there's a lot of different moving pieces that we learned as we're building it out. As I was mentioning in the presentation, it's not just the API itself, but I've you know always thought that the API is kind of the core of what you do, but the whole point of this conference is the documentation, the portals, everything you build around it is really what makes the full developer experience. And I think we realized that even an MVP can't just stop at just having an API and uh, a backend experience with some markdown files, you really need to have that full end-to-end -end self service experience in order to allow developers to feel comfortable in trying out your product and having the right resources to do it. So I would say one of the big milestones was getting that our first developer portal up and running, um, which was towards the end of 2015, where we had a very simple version up there. Um, we lacked a lot of documentation. We actually tried to use some external, um, I'd say, uh, documentation service hosting services back when we first started, where we put a lot of API docs on there. And we there were some good things about it, also some things that we didn't uh, feel fully adhere to the style that we wanted for our design as well. So I'd say that maybe the first milestone was kind of getting something up and running and having some version of it. Then I'd say the next stages after that is when we kind of moved um, that's it. We got our authentication and auth service fully working and also fully got um, our API portal into a place where we were comfortable with it. Some of the things that really helped in that was actually going to hackathons, going and getting people just using it, mm -hmm. um, having hundreds of uh, college students using it for a 24 hour period is the best way to find every single bug <laughs> and typo in your developer documentation. And we did that many times over to really help refine that, uh, that product over there. And I think what, you know, shows for it on the other end is the business side. And one of the biggest milestones was one of our first, um, I'd say production customers that we launched was Turo, which was, is, um, a rental car platform in the United States. And they have some presence in Europe as well, I believe in the UK, I'm not sure everywhere in Europe that they're in, but they support, they have about half a million cars that on their platform worldwide um, that are available for rental and smart car partnered with them towards the end of 2019. And in 2020, we launched with them in order to allow them to have a keyless rental experience. And that was kind of the culmination and milestone of a lot of work from having all the technical experience in place to then actually seeing a customer be successful using mm -hmm. all of those tools to go to go live to market. Mm -hmm. And who's working on creating and maintaining these docs now? Who's writing yeah, the docs now? Great question. So within our team, we have a, a, we're still a startup, so we have a fairly small team overall, but our engineering team is split in two. We have what we call our platform team and our experience team. The way I like to describe it is the platform team builds services that other computers interact with, and the experience team builds everything that humans interact with. So the platform team is the one who's responsible for maintaining all of the integrations with all the different car brands, maintaining the API backends itself and the infrastructure it runs on. Our experience team is doing what you're asking here of, they're the ones who actually manage our all of our documentation, um, all of our API reference, all of our um, SDKs, as well as our development developer portal where I signed up and got our credentials um, today. And they've been doing a lot of work in expanding a lot of the feature set there. 
in the next uh, coming week or two, you should see a big overhaul in the analytics dashboards provided inside of our API portal. And we're also working on bringing in things like a vehicle simulator in there as well, so that people can test and, uh, and figure out how their integration is working before having to go launch on real vehicles and to have a better test environment inside of there. So that's all done by this experience engineering team, but I'd be lying if I said it was just the engineering team who does this. There's also, you know, always a collaboration with design for understanding kind of the best ways that we should be presenting all this information. And finally, also marketing slash copywriting. That was actually something really key for us. Um, one of our uh, people on our marketing team uh, basically worked on being kind of a technical writer slash copywriter for all of the different content that goes out across anywhere on our website, both technical, both our technical documentation sites and our public product websites. Mm -hmm. And really what that allowed for was it wasn't just engineers writing content, it's engineers maybe writing the initial content, but then having it reviewed, having it, uh, the voice and the tone standardized across how everything is looking everywhere else and clarifying it so that it makes it easy for people to understand. And without having, I think, that extra copywriting step that was reviewing and editing all the content going out there, um, a lot of there wouldn't be as much clarity in our docs as we have today. Mm -hmm. For the portal further beyond uh, what you said you're going to roll out now, uh, what's on the yeah. roadmap for the dev portal? For the dev portal? Um, so those are the, the two next ones that we're working on, are those two big ones right there is uh, analytics and insight. We're finding that uh, developers, as they go to production with smart car, want a lot more insight as to how are the vehicles doing? Are there any problematic vehicles on their fleet? Is there one that's heavily failing that they need to maybe look into? Is there which brands are working really well right now for them? Um, they want to see a lot of that analytic and analytics and breakdown. And so we want to surface that into their dashboard. So that's one on the analytics side both from just metrics and tracking standpoint, as well as investigative analysis to find where they need to spend their time looking into. And then the other side is, as I was saying, the development experience of, as I'm getting to market, we find that everyone wants to be able to test vehicles in a lot of different scenarios. To expand a little on what that means, um, say I'm building an EV charging use case where I want to manage the charging of electric car. I ideally want to have a car that I can test while it's plugged in, while it's not plugged in, while it's low on battery, when it's at a high use charger, when it's a little low use charger, when it's on a long trip with uh, it's a, across you know, a state where there is maybe a lack of chargers along the way and I need to find chargers along that way. There's a ton of different scenarios that people want to test in. And even if you, if you have access to a real car, it's a real pain to have someone sitting in that car and driving and doing all of these different scenarios in order for the application to be tested. So we want to be able to simulate all of those different scenarios and situations to streamline that testing and development process. So that's the second one is the simulator. Going from there um, in building in the portal itself, some of the things that are less smart car specific, but things that I think are definitely are very key are uh, teams and role-based access control. Today, we kind of, we had initially had the, the dashboard more focused just for the developer itself who was actually building things on smart card, the engineer itself. And so it didn't matter to not have really a Teams feature or anything like that. But as we're adding simulators as well as analytics, we see the uh, user base for the dashboard expanding from developers to maybe product managers, people who are looking into metrics and analytics, maybe QA and validation engineers who want to test things using the simulator. Um, all of those different personas are going to need different levels of access control. Everyone shouldn't have the ability to reset that client secret and then kill access to the entire integration. Um, that should be protected under a different role or control. So maybe a non-technical person or a tester doesn't accidentally do something they, don't, they didn't mean to. So building that role-based access control and teams is a big thing we're looking at next year. And going off of that for the enterprise SSO, I know some other... Uh, folks also mentioned things like access to Active Directory and having that integration ready. So when you're an enterprise organization, people don't need to create new accounts on your portal and your system, but they can continue to use the identity they use for all their other single sign-on tools and be able to carry that over into SmartCar. 
Thank you very much. I wish you a lot of success further. Of course. Thank you so much, Laura.